Good afternoon, gentlemen and ladies. Uh, welcome to Lunchtime Live. My hero, right. Wayne, is with me this evening. Hello, Wayne. And good afternoon. Thank you very much, my good man. No problems. Um, today, you might have seen on the uh, thingy, what's it? Um, I'm going to be carving Stormbreaker. Now, I've sanded him down a little bit, and I'll be honest, right now, a little bit of damage on the, on the thing. Super glue, job done. Happy with that. Um, so that's going to slowly disappear, the cracks and all that kind of stuff as we go through. So I'll flick the camera down, we'll get cracking, and um, Wayne, if you happy to do the usual. Yeah, okay. will do. No probs. Wrong one, that one. That's the one I want. Right, is the light okay? Um, yes, it is. Or is it too bleachy bleach? Um, we're getting a, a, just a, a little bit of bleach from the. I think have you got the door open? Yeah. Got yeah, one. it's it's not too bad, Andy. Tell you the truth. Cool. Hopefully, you should be able to see it as it starts appearing. Right, let me pop my mouse up there. Right. So, not many in at the minute. We've got Steve Ellis in. Hey, Steve. Uh, Mike, the Midnight Joker. Circular Wood by Keith, who said we've all popped in just to watch Andy fondly chopper. <laughs> well, there's not a lot I can say to that, really, is there? <laughs> not really, no. <laughs> um, hmm, okay. Yes, yes, you are coming in to watch me fondle my chopper. Let me know if this is loud, please. Uh, it's not too bad for me, the one. Anyway, uh, Blair's just come in. Hi, Blair. And hello, gentlemen. Uh, let's see if you don't have any ladies in. Have you got ladies there, Matt? If you're watching this later, hi, ladies. And he's using a piece of you today. So I've got loads of it, Keith, so it's just kind of. Uh, you'll probably see quite a few people that have got you in it for the week. Not cool on the chest.
Feels backstage, Andy. Oh. Come in, dear boy. Come in, come in. Lord. This is a, good Lord, is it that time of day already? I was sitting there, I was scratching my bum and thought, whoa, I was supposed to be doing something. <laughs> what was it? Oh, I remember. Hello. <laughs> good afternoon, Bill. <laughs> How night. are you, gentlemen? Cool. Thank you. Getting there slowly. Oh, how handy. Oh, hello. This looks like an axe. Yeah. Hopefully, going to be storm breaker. Well, it is storm breaker. That's a bit mad. I still had the pop out, pop out open from last night. <laughs> I'm looking at going. Who are these people in the chat? <laughs> <laughs> Right, sunny day. It's not here. Really? You're in the face, no. though, right? It's uh, still uh, cold, wet, and windy. PB, it has just come in. Thank you. <laughs> nice one, Keith. Brain's all now caught up. You're doing a live this afternoon, aren't you, Brian? I'm doing one at five o'clock, sir. I'm just looking around to see if everything's ready. I still have the temporary uh, spray barricade. Yeah. If that makes sense to sort of kind of get ready. Um. Um. Is this going to be the debut of the uh, um, uh, I'll get my words out now. Uh, down drop. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not, no, 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 I've got, I've got a lot more testing to do on that before I show people that thing. Working. I also want to put the doors on it before I kind of do a show demo on it. Um, so no, I'm putting something together very quickly tonight to do the, the light spraying. Um, let's just say benefiting from the down draft bench having been built. Um, wow. <laughs> Exactly right. I mean, it's all ready to go, kind of thing in that respect. But I just want to make sure I spend a little bit of time testing what speeds to use, and so I'm not winding up painting the inside of the bench because it's sucking too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Quite literally, <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the, that finding that balance of turn it up and turn it down depending on the types of paint. You know me, Andy. I like to, like to check these things so tonight's will be old school-ish um, um, but we don't have that much painting to do I guess oh, well no I think not going to uh, and, yeah. that one, bit of fun a bit of fun yeah so it's, we're cho chosen for the subject matter I mean this is inspired by the angry maker a little bit over in Ireland he makes a video game 
Uh, he makes arcade machines, replica of arcade machines, full vinyl wraps that look absolutely amazing. Um, um, and he did a post of some of the graphics and decals he was doing in the just, you know, I mean, me and him um, had a bit of a chat and I says, look, you mind if I use this as inspiration? The, the machine in question he had was Space Invaders, but it sort of set me off down the path of, you know, we could do like, this, some cool retro gaming icons out there, you know, um, Mario, maybe, not so much, but I'm thinking more arcade, so Pac-Man, the Invaders themselves, you know, all these kind of characters. Don't Permit? Don't yeah, yeah. So you're in the, you, you know your head's in the zone. Do you know what I mean? That kind of that kind of classic eight bit arcade games kind of thing. Remember the life cycles from Tron. Double Dragon. These are the questions Oh. Would you be able to change the perforation size to vary the downfall? Good shout, Steve. The solution I've gone with is is using a variable speed on the fan, so you can change the downforce on it. Um, it's a two-stage system, one where it's being pulled back into the main canvac through a HEPA filter. Um, so full extraction is still performed to the outside world. Um, but there's a 12-inch fan sitting underneath the main desk that you can vary, so the actual pull down across its surface is being done by that um, so you kind of get full clearance but also by the same token um, um, the big fans doing the filter changing the hole size doesn't really work but what you can do with a downdraft bench is you put pieces of wood down or apply over the holes you can change the area so by changing the amount of holes you have open you can also adjust amount of downforce at any single point across the surface of the table. You can tell I've done my research on this, Wayne, right? <laughs> yes, you can deal. Yeah. All because of Lake Tidy Workshop. I mean, it's just mad. <laughs> More mad than the floor. Well, at least the floor you've got isn't as mad as the last one. Well, I've got to try and think about the visitors sort of thing. This idea of having to prop you up as you killed over through vertigo was really <laughs> worrying me for a while. <laughs> <laughs> you probably should have gotten one of the, the um, one of those carpets for the photo I sent you. Yeah, you see that, Jay. So the the, the the one I sent you, which I'm gonna have to explain for the for the audience, is a picture as a virtual hole. So it's a, a vinyl floor, but it looks like all the tiles are falling down a hole. Oh, yeah. Things are closing the floor. It looks like it's going down. So I sent Wayne a copy of that. The, the response wasn't, "Oh, that's cool." It was, "Don't you dare." <laughs> <laughs> So I backed off and got something just, you know, something something mad, but not too mad. Hi, Tommy. Tommy Dunn's Good in the chat. Good Tommy. Hi, Tommy. <laughs> Good man, John. Good man, John. <laughs> I advise that to be a good idea. I bet he wasn't sure if, if they were in the right order either. <laughs> oh, they were completely in the right order. No sense to the any of the human except us. And even at that, maybe just me. Keith said, deal. So what you're saying is, if I put a 48-inch fan in the workshop door, it'll see me cleaning it. Do you know, Keith, you'd be, you know, to be absolutely honest, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> but it depends how hard you turn it. <laughs> Make it turn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jay's in. Good evening, Jay. Good okay. evening, good afternoon, good morning, Jay. Mm 
Twisty what, mate? So many twisty bits. Look cool, though, bud. Looks cool already. I mean, how long have you been running? 15 minutes. Awesome. Oh, Barry the Bros in. Barry. Bonjour. We know he said never fear the Bros here. I would uh, say, see, do, you, do you remember Cannonball Run? What was, what was Don DeLuise's character in the <laughs> Cannonball Run? <laughs> you know, the, oh, it was Burt Reynolds and Don DeLuise, and it was Captain something or other. You know the one I mean, Wayne? Burt Reynolds, Cannonball yeah. Run. Oh, Cannonball yes. Cannonball Run. Yes, yes. Can't remember the I name remember. of the character. I've just now got a vision of, of Barry with the same helmet and cape. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a Photoshop Keith, coming on. Keith has said, thanks, dear. Your name could be called into disrepute if it then sends everything over to next door. I feel that would be a fair fair scenario. However, my expectation would be is that the, the fan, if turned up too high, may, may consume various other various other elements of your workshop so may, may, some some testing may be required <laughs> you know, yeah, the idea of make, parts of Keith <laughs> yeah make, make sure everything's nailed down Keith yeah parts of Keith being in the uh, uh, going through it might not be so desirable for anyone Steve said of the fans too high, the workshop would turn inside out. And John has said, Deal, Google says it was Captain Kios. That's the chap. Dun, dun, dun. Demo Demo. Like Evening, Demo. 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 I might have missed this, and I'm sure the question's been asked. What kind of wood is it, Andy? You. Doesn't look like me. Doesn't look like maple. Bubba. Ah, uh, I have got some maple, actually. I found some maple. Um, I, have a... <coughs> I have a small blank labeled hard maple that clearly came in an English wood selection pack I got when I first started turning. <laughs> found it the other day. I'm just like, hmm, what's the difference between hard maple and maple? Uh, oh, Barry saying Lichtenberg, Lichtenberg burn with blue glow in the dark resin would look awesome on this, Andy. And then he's apologised to me because I don't like Lichtenberg. Yeah, it's blinking danger. Again, me being mad. I did a huge amount of research on this, and I can. And this other general takeaway was, oh, that's a bit risky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's what I thought as well. I'd like to give it a go. No, I think I think I think I'd more than happily watch someone give it a go, but I think that the level of safety equipment to make me feel comfortable with having a go myself, you know, the level of safety equipment I think I'd have to have to to to, to do it myself. 
probably makes an expensive outing. There are folks that, that make that stuff over in the States, um, but you see them putting rubber mats on the floor, handle them with rubber gauntlets, you know what I mean? Basically, they treat it like high voltage, like high voltage engineers, the other thing to, and that's the only way you can treat it. Because it is, you're absolutely right, Wayne. Oh, the volts are the problem is blinking amps. You know, volts, volts bite. You know, volts bite, amps, bur amps kill. Uh, uh, Captain Keo says, yeah, I had a brim pants moment with it. Um, he says he's done it. Done what now, Baza? So I need to qualify this. Do you mean you had a brown pants moment? Or did you just do Lichtenberg <laughs> burning? <laughs> Probably both at the same time. Oh. Harry, you're a very brave man. I can only I can only say that. It's, uh, it's not Dave one on my list. One, Dave G has one. Um, William Head has one. I'm aware of. Um, but all of those equipment, I think, are homemade. I don't think they're purchased. Um, I wouldn't um, even go there. So I, I, I even bought the the. So I went quite far down the path, and I bought a, a neon sign transformer, which gives you the the appropriate voltages to make it work. They're slightly safer than harvesting a transformer from a microwave. Um, which is, you know, which is what people do. Um, um, leaving it that, my bottle went. Can you use a battery charger, as in like uh, a car battery charger? What to do, Lichtenberg? Yeah, wouldn't that do the same thing? No, it's got a bit of voltage and amp load. It's really a combination of both. So, so kind of, kind of think of it. Amp um, volts are the uh, sorry, amps are the pressure, and volts are doing the burning. So amps are pushing it through the the the, the water on the top or the moisture on the top of the material, and the 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 volts are doing the burning. Like I say, volts bite, amps kill. Electric. Volts are the uh, thing that makes you go. It gives you the, you know, you know when you get a static shock, you get a mm -hmm. sort of spark hit. You know, when you get with static, you know, you got a high volt, you got a high voltage hit. That time you feel it kind of bite and you go ow. Um, that's the volts really at work, whereas the amps will push through the material, push the charge through the the, the, the material that's on. They're the ones that really drive it along through. Um, so many things. They're the ones that heat it up too. Sorry, choked us away anyway. He made it from a microwave. You're a loony, yeah. you know, Barry. I definitely think I think you're a brave man. You're genuinely, genuinely brave. I mean, I went down. I thought that looked super cool. And I thought I'd have a crack at it. And the closer I got to building the thing, the, the parts and doing research, I just like no, no, this is crazy. What am I doing? With a Scottish accent. Yeah. Just draw lightning patterns with a pyro machine. That's exactly what uh, my night joker just said. I, I yeah, that's concur. just what makes it. Yeah, I've just I've just seen that. Yeah, it's exactly right. It's exactly right, you guys. Draw it. Don't don't burn it. And if you do if you do want to go down that Lichtenberg route, seriously spend some money on and PPE. Get yourself the time. The, the, the risk is always as you're moving the probes, the probes dislodge and, and, and carry the voltage to you. So that's the scary part. Or handling and touching the probe with bare hands is not easy with rubber gloves. But with the amount of volts and amps, you need to wear thick ones. I wouldn't do it anyway. What's the point when I could carve it just as well? 100%. Hundred percent, but you're talented and amazing. Whereas the rest of us, I'm sure. Let me qualify that. It's certainly my case, 
my ability to carve such a thing is grossly, grossly inferior <laughs> to yours. Mine would be, oh my, no, this is this is a this is a, a draw kind of territory, or like I was doing. I thought it looked cool. I like the idea of making river tables with it and, and putting the, the resin into the burnouts and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and that would look awesome. Look awesome, but my word. Yes. Yes, that's a good show. Uh, so if you guys don't know Big Clive um, um, on YouTube, go and watch Big Clive, a Scottish gentleman of some beard um, who's, a, a, who's a techie whiz on a range of topics. I love Big Clive. He did a wonderful, he did a wonderful uh, uh, video on this um, where he talks about safety and recommends don't do it. <laughs> um, um, and Baza, Captain Chaos, or sorry, and Baza's <laughs> wife says stop it. Um, and she has to be obeyed, and that would be a. And that lady's clearly get more brains than 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 so many people who do try it. You can do. You can buy a professional equipment. You can buy the PPE. You can set yourself up to do it safely. But dig in for a lot of money. Are you humming, Andy? No. Um, uh, Demo <laughs> says, Demo's comment is pretty cool. Um, just turn your Dremel up fast and swing it erratically above the wood by the cable. Surely you'll get a similar effect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, but you would get that kind of, you know, when you see them do it with bags of paint and sand? I wonder if you yeah. get the same effect with the Dremel, you know, just randomly carving and scratching the surface. I wonder if it'd pick up a, you uh, know, like a spirograph style. No, it tends to um, just shoot off in one particular direction. Yeah. Because of the rotation on the blade. The yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> no, but it's a, it, 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 so you've either tried it or you've got remarkable insight. In both cases, I'll bow to your superior knowledge. <laughs> Pendulum up. That's the topic. That's the topic. That's it. I've thought about having to go on that and doing it on a piece of wall art. Kind of mad thing I would do. But obviously not inside this workshop. I'd have to I'd have to invent some way to keep the, the mess down. Yeah. It'd be more fun than probably making the art. <laughs> <laughs> See if Alice reckons it'd be too much drag. It's probably a good point. Yeah, the Dremel would just bounce. It wouldn't probably wouldn't even cut, it would just bounce. Too much force in it if you get the Stay on the pedal. I very rarely have my foot all the way down on the pedal because it's insane. But... Have you ever done, Wayne, have you ever done the sandblasting effect on wood? Yes, I have. Using the sandblaster? Yes. Well, say uh, the, the, um, the best thing to get for doing that, rather than using the, the sandblasting medium, because that tends to uh, dirty the wood, if you like, uh -huh. you're better off getting the, the glass bleed, the glass beads that go through the sandblaster. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a hell of a lot cleaner. And you can get them from a uh, machine mart. Is that weathered look kind of thing with the... Yeah, the um, and, and you, you're better off using a wood that's uh, coarse-grained, the likes of mm. oak and ash, something that works, it works especially well on ash. Yeah. So hard, slow, the, the hard, slow... Growth versus the quick, uh, soft growth. Yes, it, it, yes, it just cleans out all the soft growth. 
you could tell when these uh, sand in drum disc things, well, sand in drums, um, are starting to lose their grip because all of a sudden they start moving up and down. <laughs> And Demo says, Carl Jacobson recently did a video on a professionally built Luxembourg setup on a slab serving board. He did indeed. Um, but if you also go on, if you do a hunt for Tim Yoda, Tim Yoda went to visit a company who do it professionally and they show you the rig that they had. Um, so check out Tim Yoda's, um, what is it called? Is it, it's not Woodshop TV. Wood, what is, no, what is wood, wood turning with Tim. Wood turning with Tim channel. Check out Tim Yoda's video on it. Um, um, equally as good, but it also gives you an insight into what a professional setup might look like. If oh, anybody is thinking about going down the, the sandblasting route, try and build a, a cabinet to do it in. Mm. Or do it outside, otherwise the stuff just goes everywhere. It's not Traditionally, against, not against the patio door. Uh oh. <laughs> Is there a story, Andy? I was going to ask. In that in that vast hole you acquired through that shipping container, I don't suppose there was a sandblasting cabinet hiding in amongst it, was there? No, but um, yeah, but no, just don't. Yeah, the wood bottle's got one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you. Well, you need it, okay. oh. as well as getting awesome stuff. I mean, really, all you need is a wooden box or a lid. In principle, absolutely. In front of you. Yeah. Right. You can buy these things. You can, surely you can buy them pretty cheap. I seem to recall seeing lots of baby versions on Amazon for a while. I may, I may or may not have had a look at one at some point in the past and it keeps showing up. Um, red thing, red and blue things kind of thing. Um, you see them in every restoration video you've ever watched. <laughs> <laughs> My next investment is quite and physical. Yeah. Makes a rather kept track, but this one was messing about with the uh, routing on a pendulum system. Yeah, demo saying build a cabinet you can recycle the sand. Every girl in his uni class built one years ago. Had to read uh, Demo's comment a couple of times there, case of what your university one year back is what, I, what somehow I read. Um, I took back and read that a couple of times, thinking, no, no, that's not what you, that's not what you type. Maybe you've got sandblasting tablet at school. Yeah. Well, they've got a forward, um, and a foundry. Um, Barry's asking you, Andy, are you leather strapping of the handle? Um, well, no, because I've carved it. Um, I could do, though. Maybe tan it. Or stain it even. Quite good time, gentlemen.
Uh, Mike is offering this advice to you, Andy. I feel it's unwarranted, though. Um, I'm sure you would know this. Uh, never hang Stormbreaker next to Molnir. Chaos would ensue. I don't have Molnir in my workshop. I've already got Stormbreaker. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's look, it's signed by loads of really cool people. Oh, look. Jimmy the Rester, Colin Furs, oh, Bobby Dukes, and some guy called Nick. Nick, something or other. <laughs> Just joking, Nick. Did you did, did you have to did you have to put the 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 axe down quite low for Nick? <laughs> I, I was, no, I can't see. <laughs> I was on my knees. That's Nick. Nick. Yeah, that's you... Nick. The minute he's talking about, by the way. He said, "Nick, look. Do you want me to come down to you?" Okay, I'm on. Um... Nick's a lovely guy. Absolutely. And it's like, what? You don't need to sign this, but you've got probably people to be doing it. It's like, well, yeah. Exactly. You've got Jimmy Garestas on there as well. You're like, oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, oh, oh. Jimmy's signing it. Yeah. Did they try to steal it? I mean, that's like the appropriate action when someone presents you with one of the, with an act that, with Bobby Duke and Jimmy and Jimmy Duress or I did, tried to pinch it from me and run off into the distance, going, "Mine!" <laughs> um, Steve moved on network. Ah, so he's a big boy. Remember, the solution from getting away from anyone is just to stay a couple of steps in front of them. That's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, but I'm a little bit nimble when people try to push them off that. Barry's saying he's never heard of any of them. Really? Because you're French, Barry. I, I don't know who this Bobby Deep was, but he was supposed to be good at party. Is he? I've only ever seen his scroll saw stuff. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody put on Facebook this morning that um, the Harrogate Woodwork show is cancelled. Really? Yeah. So I haven't confirmed that yet. I haven't been to have a look at the site. So. That's a shame. That was the last great hope of the year. Oh well, let's let's hope they change their mind when the the social distancing is reduced today. We'll see. Although, we'll see. Uh, Mike, the Midnight Joker says a little off topic, but on my maker's bucket list is making Stormbringer Elric of Melnibone's sword. Melnibone's yeah. sword. Melnibone's yeah. sword. That's a Michael Moorcock um, really? character. Yeah, it is. Mark, the gentleman woodturner, informs us that he's in the car park watching. Hi, Mark. Hope you head outside, Andy, see if he's there. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> Mark, you're a stalker. You're a proper stalker. <laughs> How many times have we had to discuss this, Mark? Seriously, I thought the court, I the court injunction was enough, but seriously, man. Um, man has an ass ball. Uh, yeah, Keith's confirming. Right, grand. Young Bazaar is saying, uh, hashtag Andy versus Bobby. No. It's not gonna not gonna happen, Baz. We wouldn't do that for it, brother. A joint project? That would be different. And a little piece of useless information, since I mentioned Michael Moorcock, he gave the name to Hawkwind, the band. Was he really? Yeah, he did. Uh, Mike, the Midnight Joker, is suggesting that Mark's behaviour, uh, could that be classed as dogging? <laughs> Oh, 
Nobody's putting the boot down, you can hear. Yes, yeah, Steve. I saw Paul Grimm in the 70s, uh, the early 70s, and I also went to the after gig party as well. He uh, John is saying he wrote some of their lyrics as well, didn't he? He did some of the early ones, some of the, the late 60s stuff. That's a band. That's a band I didn't see. Um, I would reckon. I would yes, reckon depending on how much Wayne's had. Sorry. John saying the more important question is, did you meet Theatre? Yes, I met Theatre as well. No, I feel Midnight Joker's question should be interpreted differently. It says Wayne's old enough to have seen the Pink Fairies. I imagine. Uh, Mike, I would suggest, depending on in how many glasses of wine Wayne has had in an evening, he may see them today. Mecca, bingo hot. So, my night Goku says, I was lucky enough to be at the right age in Birmingham when it was rock Mecca. Um, so, you went to play bingo at Mecca, Mike, <laughs> or have I got the wrong end of the stick? <laughs> Andy, Barry's asking, will the storm break and be going on SD? Uh, ah, go on. Yeah, probably. Um, I'll finish him off properly first. I mean, there's no way I'm going to get the other side. Well, maybe. Finish him! <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see.
<clears throat> was the other Stormbreaker saying that make us one or make us two? Make us two. Well, first one, I didn't go to the first one. I sat at home and watched it and went, oh, where did people go? Because um, I knew what would happen when everyone had come back. I knew what was going to happen. Everyone was going to go, oh, it was amazing. Oh, you missed out. Yes, I missed it. Um, why is there muttering under your breath? I hit you all. Yeah, basically. Things will get. I'm glad that the second one was my first ever. That was cool. Mark is telling us that he's having a slight hypo thanks to hospitals, so Jelly Babies that is for a while. Mark, what you require is Jelly Babies and Jaffa Kids. I'm just saying. I'm no doctor, however. And Mark says, um, this is what I'm most interested in bands like Zeppelin, Sabbath and Judas Priest in the local bars. Uh, Steve followed up on that, saying he lived in Coventry and saw Zeppelin, Sabbath and Deep Purple in Birmingham. I saw Baby King before he died. It's crazy. Did you? Yep. Yeah. That's that the oldest person that I could think of. You can't hear what Andy's saying. What? Well, I've got the drill on, Baz. I'm surprised you're still awake. Yeah, so am I. Um, blood sugar levels down to 2.8. Oh, really low. Yeah, because he, he wasn't allowed to have anything to eat prior to his scan. That's not good. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bit too low, Mark. Sugar. He's got a bag of jelly babies, which is just about as good. <coughs> the babies, the babies will sort them out. I feel somewhat jealous of them having those jelly babies. He's quite put me in the mood for them.
So what we're discovering is that Mark, the gentleman, would turn a main fact B, main fact B, Doctor Who. You know, it's one missing regeneration we didn't know about. Right, Mike is asking uh, Andy, is you one of those woods that tries to push you off the line when you carbon it, Andy? Yes. Yes, it is. It's a pain. But it's manageable. It's not, it doesn't suddenly go whoop, but you do notice a, like a bump. You get soft, then hard, then soft, then hard. Does that make sense? Yep. It's um, irritating. Because you, it doesn't matter what colour it is, it, it, it just depends on what the year of growth, do you know what I mean? It's too strong. to shave your beard off Mark <clears throat> Mark says he's not Batman hey, he's not Doctor Who, he's Batman he'll have to shave his beard off so we can check the chin uh, Mike the Midnight Joker says "Oh, um, did you ask that question for him? sorry yes I did yeah. sorry mate, I'll just scroll up I think my streamy is a bit slow Emmett's in, good afternoon Emmett Emmett oh Emmett Thank you, I received my parcel today. Absolutely lovely. Go check out Emmett's channel uh, if you don't already subscribe to it. He's doing the maker slot every month. Um, and we've just done, well, we've just done all mine. So, uh, thanks for that, mate. Uh, Keith's having to leave. He'll watch the end later. And he says, thanks for the giggle. You don't this one, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Emma, that's the new one. The double robot be on. Which one, what, sorry? Did all the robots be on? Yes. Change that to rivets instead of robots. I knew what he meant. Uh, Barry's asking you, Andy, do you get much vibration from the Dremel? He can only use his Dremel 4000 for a while before his hand starts to tingle. As long as it's only his hand. Sit on it might find easier. Dean in the shed just arrived in. Hi, Ian. Hello, Ian.
Come today, Andy. No. Nope. I get the parcel from America, but I don't get the one from up the road. A little bit annoying. Um, I spoke to the postman this morning, though, and said he got a problem with our house. Yeah, and he looked a bit confused. Uh, don't seem to have a problem delivering us today, but we haven't had any Facebook for such a long time. I was like, uh, is, is, is there something you're not telling us? Do you know what I mean? Um, but no, it's all good. He said everything's fine. Yeah. I guess I just have to be a bit more patient. I'm just not going to do it. I don't think you is very common in the States. This is the gap that I put on my stuff. It stinks. But, and it's like, think beef stock. Really? Yeah, look. Uh, or snot. So it's, uh, so molten cow uh, uh, shavings is what you've got there. 
Well, Molten cow seepage. There we go. Well, that was the one I was after. <laughs> Check that out, though. Every now and again, you buy something and you think, I bought these, I'll use them later, and then you can't find them. Yep. One of those moments. Oh. Right. Emmett, you can get that there's two types of you that I've just seen. Um, there's the English you, which is um, obviously England, Europe, uh, down to uh, Southwest Asia. But you also get a uh, speci specific Pacific you, which um, in the home of that is uh, Northwest the United States, Oregon, Washington, places like that. <clears throat> Are you sure? No, boom. Hmm. All right. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Definitely having a moment of sticking myself to stuff. So there you go. The ladies and gentlemen. Boom. Awesome. Uh, Look, at Look at the pretty. Look at that pretty. Actually, that, I mean, that's really cool. That is what? Oh, spat. It's about a foot long, that is. It's about a foot. So that's about 12, in that's about 12 inches. Yes, yeah, it's, it's about 12 inches. You know. <laughs> um, I t what size of bloody hands have you got? <laughs> They're not real inches, Wayne. <laughs> They're just inches. <laughs> it's man inches. Um, <laughs> right, where's my, where's my tape, dude? -doo? There we go. Here we go. Let's let's see how long she is. He is. Uh, he's seven. Uh, looking inch. at your hand span, I'm going to say is about seven or eight inches, depending on your hand span. Yeah. So and and the, I've I've just been looking on the floor and I saw, can't see the cup off your super glue yet. No, no, no. I still can't. <laughs> it's fine. Um, but there we go. That's I'm I'm well pleased with that. That's not bad in an hour. To be fair. Pretty cool, um, man. Pretty cool, man. Uh, and I bet Jacob would love that as well, to be fair. Will it be safe to give Jacob? Well, that's you, isn't it? So that's a good point. Don't want him putting it in his mouth. No, not in, the, not, 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 in, not in the mouth of the, of the, the, uh, of the baby Viking. That's a good move. But cool, then he might, it might build up a tolerance to it, and then he'll be like hardcore. Exactly. Well, these are these are experiments that you can conduct. People may have views. Yeah. <laughs> I won't be doing that to my son. Right. Me... Mark's yeah. blood sugar levels are back up, so he's heading off back home. Yeah, cool. See you later, Mark. Right, gentlemen and ladies, thank you very much for dropping in today. Um, I will. You need to carve Thor next time, same scale. What, in a lunchtime live? You're having a giraffe, blimey. Um, thank you ever so much, guys. Hope you have a good day. Have a good... Uh, check out Richard the Beard 16 tonight on um, his channel. 8 o'clock. Be well worth it. It's going to be a laugh, as always. Come check it out. Um, I'm, in, I... I'm on at 5. I'm on at 5. Oh, yeah. Dale's on at 5. Oh, pardon, Dale. Uh, live at five with Dale. Ding, ding, ding. That's a, actually you've nailed it. I've been hunting for a title for it. You know what I mean? So there's lunchtime lives and live at five. There we go. Well done. <laughs> uh, thank you. I'm here all week. Um, it. Take it easy, guys. Don't forget Dale. Don't forget Rich. And tomorrow lunchtime, Nick. And then tomorrow evening, Wayne. It's me. Wayne. So, Wayne. Take it easy, folks. Thank you very much for watching. And stay safe and all that jazz. Bye-bye. 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 Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Hit the bloody button. Hit the button. <laughs>